So even though DC live action movies are in a really turbulent place right now, it's really reassuring and refreshing to know that the animation arm of DC Studios is in a really strong place. What is up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a brilliant day. So in this video, we are going to be reviewing Green Lantern Beware My Power, which is the latest DC animated movie and is actually surprisingly really, really good. I mean, the Green Lantern mantle of a character hasn't broken into the mainstream in the same way that Superman and Batman have, but hopefully this movie can begin the shift towards this. And this movie is kind of the closest thing that we'll get to a sequel to Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern movie. And it's really, really great. And I cannot wait to break it down for you in this movie review. <laughs> So this film has a super quick, rapid origin storyline for the Jon Stewart character, and we find out that he's a recently discharged marine sniper, and he reluctantly takes on the mantle for being the Green Lantern defender of Earth, and then he really quickly finds himself embroiled in a true universal interplanetary war between the Round tribe and the Thanagar tribe, and he works alongside other B-level DC heroes to find out what's really going on and learn a lot more about how to truly be a Green Lantern. From a positive point of view, this film has a lot of twists and turns, which are really, really wicked. And it is a true spectacle, actually. It's really, really exciting. A lot of wow moments, especially in the final act of this movie. But even across this film, you know, like I said, it is a true universal battle. So you see a lot of death, a lot of war, and it really does explore the outskirts of the DC universe. So you see characters and universes and tribes that you've never really seen in the mainstream space. So it's really, really cool. I feel like if you're a true comic book fan of DC heroes and DC fandom, you're absolutely going to love it. And it's really cool to peel back the layers of what's really going on and find out a lot more about the deeper mystery. And it actually packs in quite a lot. I mean, it's a tight 90 minute movie as most DC animated films are. And it paces through all of its material really, really well. And I did really like how it has got new characters and old characters. It really does focus on the lesser known characters, which is really, really great. As you know, there are other movies that really do focus on Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, etc. However, from a negative point of view, some of the twists and turns are really, really predictable. And a lot of other brands are doing this particular twist right now. I know it's a weird title to compare it to, but if you have seen other Scooby-Doo episodes, you can kind of see some of the clues that they are leading towards this bigger twist taking place. And for new viewers, especially new viewers to DC at large, it is going to be quite a lot of new information and new characters but that being said I feel like they do make it relatively straightforward to follow and some of the character interactions do feel really really stiff at points but thankfully this is few and far between and it is really really engaging from a storyline perspective. <laughs> So from a cast and character's point of view, like I said, it does have old and new characters, but it definitely does focus on lesser known characters as part of the wider DC universe. It does give some nods and smiles to, you know, Batman, Superman, Martian Manhunter, etc. But it definitely does focus on this new batch of characters. So let's go through them one by one. So first up, of course, we have Aldous Hodge voicing the Jon Stewart character. And I feel like, you know, he is a really, really cool hero. He definitely is the eyes and ears for the audience to be entering into this world. And like I said, it was really, really cool how you do get to see his origin story line but they don't draw it out I mean the first Green Lantern movie with Hal Jordan that was so drawn out whereas this time you know they really quickly get into it and then they put him into a bit of a wider mystery and I quite like his growth trajectory across this movie I mean it is a little bit typical in terms of what you have seen before in terms of a, bit of a reluctant character he doesn't want to embrace being this superhero but then he does kind of become the superhero so you know you have seen it happening before but it is really cool in the kind of modern twist that they give to it what I would have loved to have seen a little bit more of though is that they do definitely show Show that this character has a lot of past trauma from his time as a marine sniper and he has gone through a lot of horrific stuff and they do kind of nod back to it especially at the start of this movie and then they do trickle it across this film but you don't really feel or see the impact of the trauma taking place with this character I mean I guess a little bit towards the end of his arc but I would have loved it if they would have delved into this a little bit more but that being said I feel like Jon Stewart is a really great character and people have been wanting to see him on the big screen as Green Lantern for so long. So it's really, really nice to finally see him having his time to shine. We've also got Jimmy Simpson playing the Green Arrow character, the reluctant mentor towards Jon Stewart. 
and he definitely is bringing a lot of sarcasm, a lot of wit, and a lot of experience as well as he is obviously a Justice League member, and he really is helping everyone, kind of from a leadership point of view, but then is allowing Jon Stewart to have his own space to shine as well. So I feel like he is the perfect mentor. He definitely has Hawkeye's trick arrows as well. I do feel like it's absolutely hilarious how there are very similar characters between Marvel and DC, and Green Arrow and Hawkeye are definitely very, very similar. We've also got Jamie Gray Hyder playing the Hawk girl character. I guess she's kind of a little bit like Wonder Woman and the other Themyscira women in terms of being a really powerful warrior. She does have quite a bit of cringe dialogue though. I feel like they really try to amp up the fact that she is a bit of a no-nonsense powerful warrior character, but it does come across a little bit cringeworthy at points. We've also got Brian Bloom playing the Adam Strange character, not quite like Doctor Fate or Doctor Strange, but definitely a bit of a mythical character. We've also got Nolan North, of course, brilliantly voicing Nathan Drake in the Uncharted series. And over here, he's playing the Hal Jordan character. I won't spoil anything to do with the Hal Jordan character, but I did think it was really, really clever what they did with this character. I guess he's kind of passing the torch onto the Jon Stewart character. I do feel really bad for Hal Jordan, as in so many different interpretations, either they're unsuccessful or they kill off this character really early on. And I just wish that Hal Jordan really did have a lot of focus and opportunity to really shine, but he's never been able to crack it in the same way that, like I said, Bruce Wayne and Batman and Clark Kent and Superman have. And maybe, you know, Jon Stewart will allow the Green Lantern mantle to be really, really successful. But I am really hopeful one day that we'll get to see a proper, definitively well-told Han Jordan storyline. And then finally, we've also got Sinestro. And I similarly really love the Sinestro character. I feel like Mark Strong played him so well in the Ryan Reynolds live action movie. And I just love the fact that, you know, he's so powerful, really, really cocky, really, really experienced. And this ego really gets to him. And then he becomes a really dark character. So actually, I love the Sinestro character. And similarly, like I said with Hal Jordan, I really do hope that both of these characters one day really do massively make their breakthrough. As like I said, the Hal Jordan and Sinestro storyline in the Ryan Reynolds movie was really, really great. It's just such a shame that the first half of that movie was really disappointing. But anyway, as far as this movie is concerned, it's a bit of a really cool continuation in a bit of a pseudo evil way from that live action movie. And I feel like in this movie, he's really, really great. And so from a casting character's point of view, even though they do focus a lot more on the B-level DC heroes, they actually do it really, really well. <laughs> So from a visuals point of view, Green Lantern Beware My Power looks really, really great. Of course, it's the latest movie to come out from DC Animation Studios, and it feels really, really super modern. All of the space sequences look really, really wicked. It does feel very, very similar to Star Wars, actually. They even use hyperspeed in certain times. You see a lot of alien creatures as well, a lot of spaceship battles, a lot of interdimensional wars taking place. And, you know, all of those battle sequences look really, really wicked. And, I mean, we all love DC because of the superheroes, and you get to see a lot of powers and because it's animation they can go really really wild with all of their imaginations and it looks really really cool like i said you know some of the dialogue sequences definitely feel very very stiff so i hope that they are able to work this to make it a lot better in future dc animation movies but as far as what you see in this film it looks incredibly impressive <laughs> So from a comparisons point of view, let's first look at all of the other Green Lantern entries. So I would say, you know, this movie is probably a lot stronger than Ryan Reynolds' live action film. As much as I do love that film, I feel like it had so much opportunity. And if it did have the potential to have a sequel, I feel like they could have remedied a lot of the issues that people have with the first film. But anyway, let me move on from that. So I feel like it is a lot stronger than that. I'd probably put it on the same level as First Flight and Emerald Knights. I really, really enjoyed those movies. And I would say this is a lot stronger than the TV series, which was really, really cool as well, but I feel like from an animation's point of view, that series was a real letdown. Now let's look at the other Tomorrowverse movies, which this is actually a part of, as part of the Tomorrowverse universe. I mean, I did a lot more prefer the DC AMU. I feel like that was such a wicked animated universe. And the Tomorrowverse just hasn't taken off in the same way yet. But in terms of comparing it to the other Tomorrowverse entries, I'd put it on the same level as Soul of the Dragon. And if we look at so much stronger, than Justice Society and Man of Tomorrow, but I don't think it's as good as Injustice. <laughs> So overall, I actually really enjoyed Green Lantern Beware My Power. I think it's a lot better than I thought it would be. I feel like it's really great to focus on lesser known characters and tell a really great storyline and have it as part of the Tomorrowverse universe. I actually really love the Green Lantern character. I feel like his power set is really, really cool. I love the fact that it looks at will and fear and hope and the way in which people take advantage of all of this and the way in which, you know, you can really use your imagination to create anything that you want. So I feel like the Green Lantern character is really, really cool and I'm just hopeful that he really is going to break through 
into the mainstream one day. But like I said, you know, this film is really, really great. I feel like it could have been improved a lot more if they had really delved a lot deeper into Jon Stewart and had a few more twists and turns that were really, really shocking. But that being said, what they did have was really, really wicked. And so for all of those reasons, I'm going to give it a solid seven out of 10. Now I'd love to hear what you think, so please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.